Hey, everybody. Happy Sunday. Today is Sunday, September 19th, and this is your Sunday submission after Beltor 266 UFC Vegas fight night, whatever you call it, 37. My name is Edward Carbajal, and this is uh, MMANews.com's YouTube channel. Make sure you thumbs up, click the bell notification, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, we have interviews with Alexander Hernandez and uh, Cynthia Calvillo, who fights Sunday at UFC 266, getting all these numbers mixed up, um, this coming weekend. So my seven, next Sunday's Sunday submission will be about 267 takeaways from 266. It's International Fight Week uh, starting this week, so we got to look at last week first, so let's get into that. If you um, follow me and all the stuff I do, uh, I stream this at my on my own Twitter, at Carbazel. That's my Twitter handle, and um, you can check out the content I put out for MMANews.com and other places uh, of similar demographics or whatever you want to call it. Not demographics, content, whatever. Um, hmm. Hope you like the new streamlined look. I'm trying to be faster. I actually don't know when I'm going to get to the barber, so I just shaved my head off. My all my hair, <laughs> shaved my head off, all the hair off my head. And I taught a jujitsu class this morning. I've been up for quite a while, so forgive me if I seem a little out of it. But I'm gonna I'm gonna try the Jason Statham look for a little bit, right? All right. So here we go. Um, lots of stuff happened. I mean, obviously we had a, uh, another double header. Big Bellator event, Yoel Romero's debut, fought Phil Davis last night. <clears throat> he lost. And uh, UFC Vegas uh, on ESPN Plus, which you know I always prioritize that last because I don't got ESPN Plus, so that's how we're going to talk about it. Um, before I get into it, there, you know, with the news uh, of the week, I mean, if you want to look at all the trending stuff that happened, MMANews.com definitely has you covered there as far as a lot of UFC stuff and whatever whatever else ails you if you like to talk about what everyone else is talking about. But um, one thing that seemed to have gone under the radar, at least on this outlet, I feel like is worth mentioning. Um, so a lot of news is made off of uh, since uh, Helwani has been brought back the uh, Ariel Helwani brought back the MMA hour. Um, one of the things he mentioned um, that caught my eye, was um and i found it on twitter because i don't watch the mma hour i'm usually working when that's on um and it's like four hours still i think right wasn't it the mma hour it was like four hours long but either way not like this this is 20 30 minutes we call this your sunday 30 minute submission or whatever you want to call it anyway um he mentioned that uh, he had gotten a text about a new uh league coming it was called the world fight league um and it's supposed to be a global league, and there's a lot of people like actors and football players behind it. And, you know, a lot, it, it made um, folks like me that have been following this sport for a long time and um, kind of been like, um, you know, we've seen things come and go in this sport. We've seen the rules change numerous times. I mean, we've seen rules come up when there were no rules. So this World Fight League is supposed to have almost like a team based um, version of it or whatever you want to call it um what am i what's the word i'm looking for here uh format right like a team based format um listen I, and i'm all for all of that you know, like like i always like something new um i'm actually writing something more in depth about this so i'll get more into it um in the in the piece that i'm writing it's a long piece so um and i i, I want to have full creative freedom on it so It'll be something I'm publishing myself. But um, again, if you follow me on Twitter, uh, it'll probably be out by tonight, the earliest, Monday morning, the latest. But um, we've been here before, you know, with these with these uh, or organizations that are new and, they, and they're and they're promising or trying to do something new. And um, so like that, that was like kind of like a lot of chatter since the MMA hour. I think it aired on Tuesday. And then, like Wednesday, Thursday, everyone was doing research and hearing things. And then, then uh, Helwani wrote something, gave more details out on his Substack. Um, and one of the things was the team-based thing and how it was global. They're going to focus on North America for it. It was all very familiar to me. Um, 2018, there was something called the MMA Pro League. Mark Taffet, who's Clarissa Shields' manager, uh, was the president of that. They were supposed to be this new same thing, team-based representative from like East Coast, West Coast, like Pennsylvania versus New Jersey or something like that 
was their first event. They had it in the Hard Rock, one of the first uh, events, mind you, Hard Rock uh, Hotel in Atlantic City, New Jersey, um, which is a great venue, by the way. I wish there, were, uh, I wish more MMA would, I wish more MMA was happening there now versus you know the way it was back then when I wasn't even covering the sport, and I would have preferred to have reason to get down there because outside of that, there's nothing to do in Atlantic City but gamble and you know make a fool of yourself. <laughs> um, but um, that thing happened. They only had one event, and then they kind of it kind of just fizzled. I don't know if it was money. I think they aired it on Flow, uh, Flow Sports, Flow Combat, which was another weird you know choice for me. Um, you know, you, you, I think you have to put something like if you're going to try something like new, something like that, and have it be new, you got to put it where more people can watch it, where it's accessible, right? Hmm. So, which brings me to the other iteration of this. The again, MMA Pro League wasn't the first time either. I know that's 2018. Now we got to go back to 2006. International Fight League. So, if you haven't heard of International Fight League, Chris Horadecki, Roy Nelson, of uh, a lot of guys cut their teeth there. They, they had teams that were like location based. Um, Boss Rutten was a coach. Hensel Gracie was a coach. Um, and I forget, like, there was a, co- a couple other not- notable, like, coaches, like um, Vladimir Machichenko fought there. So it was, it, it didn't, it, it fizzled. It lasted to, from 2006 to 2008, I think. I'm pretty sure that's right because I, that's from what I remember from the notes I made for the thing I'm working on. But, um, it's one of these things that, again, like I loved it. They actually had a presence in the 2008 New York Comic Con, which is I back. To, I mean, I'm 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 a bit of a nerd, but I'm not someone that goes to. I go to horror conventions more. I've been to more horror cons than Comic Cons, and um, but I went to that one because of. I mean, there were supposed to be seminars and stuff going on at that, and because one of the co-owners was uh was uh, the guy that. Uh, owned Wizard Magazine, Wizards of the Coast, which was a popular like geek culture magazine. So I don't even know if that's around now. He, I mean, if it was around now, or they brought it back, he'd probably make a killing now because obviously, geek culture, you know, comic books, video games, all that stuff is very big now, especially like on Twitch and streaming culture, things like that. But um, you know, that was the first iteration of a team-based organization. Again, had a lot of money behind it because of where they were coming from, and and um, um. Uh, it just kind of, I guess they lost funding, but the thing they did right, why so many people remember them, um, was they were, they were on, uh, I forget what channel nine was out here in the S coast on the, on the East coast rather. Um, cause I'm, I forget the name of the network back then. It's cause they, they keep changing the name of it, but channel nine around here is like a local, you know, broadcast station. Um, they're based out of Secaucus, So it's always kind of up there. So it's in between of like 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 it covers a good region of this of the so they had exposure. I mean, I remember Eddie Bravo and Joe Rogan flying out to watch an IFL event and they were featured in the crowd. So the point I'm making is, you know, these team based things, as much as I love the idea and I'd like to see it, um make combat sports, not just mixed martial arts, boxing, wrestling, um, you're not gonna get it, it's hard to sell the team concept because at the end of the day, it's one versus one. And when you look at all the regulations and the athletic commissions and how they get involved and write their rules, it's based on one single person fighting another person. I know we have teams out there that we could sell, you know, the, uh, you know, at Sanford MMA and ATT and, you know, Jackson Wink and Team Elevation, and, um, all those things, you know, you could have those gyms fight each other, but that's better served as in like a, quintet type of and this is my opinion by the way i mean I, I could be wrong if i knew what the hell i was doing i would I'd, I'd be making millions putting on events not not doing this on a sunday afternoon for for some chump change out up in here but um um like a quintet like uh, i forgot the name of the uriah faber bite off of quintet that they did but you know they had team quintet team ufc team you know like stuff like that for, and, and that attrition grappling rule set if you haven't checked out Quintet, it's like, you know, it's a team based. The weight class doesn't matter. I think their total weight matters versus one. They have to be the same weight versus one another. But like two guys grapple. And if it's a draw, no one wins. You know, if no one taps anyone. It's submission only. So no one taps anyone. They step off and the next guy step on. But if one this guy, some a guy wins, you know, the winner stays on, loser leaves, and and they they have to eliminate so they eliminate the member of the team, their crew points or or by submission and 
how many people are left or, or so, something to that effect. But in that sense, I, I, I actually think we could get grappling more popular if that came out as, as something, you know, that versus this MMA based thing that they're trying to do. Um, if you're trying to reimagine the sport, in my opinion, the closest version of that that we have is a professional fighters league because they are a league and everyone wants to go use the word league international fight league mma pro league um and this one's called the world fight league um but professional fighters league keeps the individuality of the fighter they use a tournament bracket which is used universally in all sports for everything i mean if you're watching football instead of watching this right now I, when i record it you know that's eventually going to lead to a bracket that takes folks to the super bowl right so it's something that's universally accepted. And then, you know, again, a new season, the season thing. I like the, that that's the closest I think we'll get, but they, because they don't, they didn't try to remove the individuality of what combat sports is and mixed martial arts is. So I just wanted to take some time to talk about that because, um, and then, and then the, the last point I'll make on this is this, this world fight league, they're not going to even make their debut until 2023, you know? So, why even mention it now like what do i care you know what's that what have you done for me lately so right now we got all these things happening the events we're about to talk about that just happened right now the events coming up you know uh, because of covid international fight week for the ufc is this week so uh, my podcast co-host is actually uh, last minute decided to to try to go because um you know there wasn't one technically that's why they're doing it in september it's usually in july i know i did a whole sunday submission where i thought that that pay-per-view in that first week of july i forget which one was it the connor one i think it might have been a connor pay-per-view his first uh dustin gate uh dustin poirier fight i might be right i might be right on that but either way or i'm probably wrong i'd have to check but either way um so they're doing it now it's the brian ortega volkanovsky ufc 266 again we have the calvillo interview we'll talk more about that next week but um you know there's no point in mentioning it now and if you go to the wfl website all it is is a logo there then that they're coming soon i mean 2023 is not soon that's a whole year and some months away and then depending on when you launch in 2023 what the well you know not for another what the fuck i care about what you're doing now you know what i mean so that's what that's where i i just wanted to put it out there because i know we probably didn't write about that on mmanews.com and the folks that watch this YouTube channel. I mean, it's, it's something to pay attention to, though, because, I mean, you never know when, when, when the timing could be right for something like that to actually work in this sport. But um, anyway, let's move on to uh, the weekend's results. So, again, doubleheader, UFC, uh, Bellator 266, UFC Vegas 37. Um, I was more zeroed in on the Bellator event because it was Yoel Romero's debut. We actually – let me add this up. So I can actually – I know how I always talk about how I can't play it, but these are all GIFs, GIFs, whatever you want to call it, um, except this one. So we can look at some of the highlights from there, but uh, it was a three-round. So so if there's not a title on the line, Bellator, if you're not aware, unaware, or if you're not aware, um, Bellator does not like to do um, five-round main events like the UFC does. Um if there's no title on the line, it's just a three rounder, which is, I think is fine in my opinion. I mean, that the whole thing for, the, for five rounds is to get to add to that extra drama for a title fight or what have you. Hmm. So actually got some of my recovery juice in there from my, cause I trained this morning. Tastes good. Uh, <laughs> so we had the, the matchup here. Listen, I mean, you all Romero's, was supposed to make his debut against Anthony Rumble Johnson. So if you did, if you didn't watch Bell Tour 266 last night, they did say that um, he's out of the light heavyweight tournament. The alternate that they said was an alternate a uh, few months back, Julius Anglicus, is going to step in and, and fill his spot. So that bracket changed because Anthony Rumble Johnson is out. He's he's got an undisclosed illness. Whatever it is, seems to be serious enough to ha have him out at least until next year. So it sucks, but I mean. It almost works because we all got excited to see uh, Romero versus Rumble, and then we lost that when uh, you know first it was supposed to be uh, when Rumble was supposed to fight uh, Joel Romero. He, Romero had the eye issue, so he had to get that looked at or whatever. And then tournament was already going on. Uh, everyone that advanced advanced, and then uh, but Davis fought Nemkov, lost. 
So at ranked at number three, Phil Davis. So this, I think I said this last week, this is an opportunity for Yol to insert himself into the to the Bellator light heavyweights elite. And that didn't happen. He lost a decision. One of the things that happened was y- Yol was disputing, not disputing, but questioning, like, you know, what are you talking about? It's only three rounds. Because the guy left, the, the guy just came from the UFC. He was a five, you know, he fought Israel Adesanya for, you know, it's a, it's a five round guy, guy that got used to, most of these guys trained for five rounds. Right. So, um, but oddly enough, he uh, like got out wrestled. Um, we got some of the highlights here. So we ch- take a look at how he just kept sucking up uh, the legs out from, from um, Romero. Um, this is the second round, you know, and um, it's just weird to see. Cause you, you know, Yo Romero is just like a silver medalist in wrestling from Cuba. Um, he just got out, out pointed and controlled. And um, one of the things, um, I don't know if it's the 205 because he's he fought at 180. You got to remember, he fought at 185 in the UFC. So this is heavier for him. And, and I know that's not like most of these guys walk around heavier than they are. But um, when they're training and they're competing and they work to cut weight, they're, they're, they they it's almost it's weird to carry that extra weight when you're doing this in a live fight and i'm wondering if at 44 years old that was romero's issue and um not to take anything away from uh this is when he finally stops the takedown when i was in round two um one of the things I'm wondering is uh, not to take away from from Romero, but at 44 years old and he's still a freak. And uh, one of the comments that Phil Davis made in the post fight press conference, they asked him about um, his strength. Um, <laughs> was that the? Uh, I'm just laughing because I I remembered when Romero kind of did that uh, against Israel Adesanya, like that was kind of like I was worried that the fight was going to be like kind of. I don't want to say boring like that because it was, was. I was expecting more activity when he fought Adesanya, but for last night, <clears throat> it looked like he was there. And and again, you lose the decision. Oddly enough, one of the judges scored for for Romero it was a split decision. If I'm if I'm remembering correctly, I don't think they write the names of the judges here when it's a yeah split decision. So Jaron Vallel was a judge that scored for for Romero. If I'm not mistaken, I'd have to look at the. Bellator was tweeting the scorecards. Mm. And we have to, I have to look because Jaron Vallel is also a referee. If I'm thinking of the same guy and please drop in the comments if I'm wrong, because I could dead, very well be wrong, you know, but um, I just thought that, that uh, the guy always seems to have an off when he's, he's a, when he's an official refereeing. Uh, what was the fight? I was thinking about it this morning on my way to training. Mark Munoz against somebody. I don't. I think it was Munoz was either get the receiver or or submitting someone, but he was a referee for that, and the choke was so obviously in, and he was, and the, the guy was out. And Jaron Vallel, he might be like to me, he's like another Yamaro Yamasaki. He's just absent, like not really there. I mean, he may look like he may be moving around in, in the ring and watching guys, but the the whatever they're looking for to as cues to to stop the fight. I don't think he's wise to him. <laughs> That's just my opinion. Um, and then uh, one of the other shocking things, we don't have any of the highlights on here, uh, unfortunately. But uh, and this is, I know my, my name is on the byline for this, but I, I write the this piece um, just to l- let you see the fight card. Someone else adds all this stuff, and I'm not sure how that's uh, new content by just changing something that was submitted days before. But... Um, and then they just put the scores and stuff on here. But this fight here, uh, Neiman Gracie uh, not, not, uh, TKOing Mark Leminger. I thought that was going to be a grappling contest. And then he comes and does a first-round knockout. And it sucks that we don't have the highlights up here. I, sh- I, I should have uh, queued up my own Twitter there so I could share, share the highlights. Um, but uh, it was like an uppercut. Like, uh, with something we weren't expecting. You hear the name Gracie. You automatically are, you know, because of the, their name of synonymous with jiu-jitsu and the sport and MMA and UFC one, all that. You're looking for submissions. You're not looking for this. <laughs> so uh, 
But I mean, listen, that's the thing about, about the fight game and, and this sport in particular. You know, if you don't evolve with what's going on, you're going to get left behind. And it looks like, you know, Gracie was coming off a loss and it looks like he recognized that and was like, I got to, you know, it's time for me to, um, to, especially when you have a name like Gracie, right? Like, of course you expect him to do jujitsu. You're Gracie. <laughs> So, I mean, I think if you came with some mediocre strike, I mean, not that his strike with me was great, what the combination was great, but um, if you come at if you come at somebody and your name is Gracie, you know, and like 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 Khabib Namagomedov, you don't expect him to knock you out. You expect to get dragged for four rounds and Kimura to or face cranked to death. You know what I mean? But if he knocks someone out or you start doing some fancy kickboxing moves or something like that, that's something to you know be shocked at. Um, but um. So that's I, I think that's part of why he was able to score it. You know, you're always expecting the takedown and the ground game and stuff like that. So good for him for for playing that uh, mental chess against his opponent and getting that win. Um, he called out uh, he called out a- a- Asimov, um, Yaroslav Asimov, and um, you know he just said he wanted wh- whoever's next, and he had a bunch of clever quips because he doesn't talk trash. So he definitely had some quotes uh, already to fire off in his post fight interview. But um, I was happy to see him when, especially, you know, he's an East coast um, jujitsu guy that got a knockout. So of course I'm going to, I'm going to be all over that, but um, that was belt or two sixty six. There was a lot of decisions on the card. Unfortunately, you know, I'm a fan of finishers, but um, it was still a fun card. And it was there. It's, I think they're in Arizona next for the next leg of the light heavyweight tournament. Some interesting things to come though, for them. Um, Bellator is definitely uh they're having a bit of a rough spot because of, you know, they went from Paramount, CBS Sports, Showtime. And usually when you when you start changing your broadcast like channels to watch, even though it's under the same Viacom umbrella, um, you know, sometimes folks will will either they'll follow you to the new channel or they'll, they'll just be like, you know, they'll they'll do their what they do normally when they're searching on their clicker or whatever. And, oh, they're not there anymore. And they just kind of give up. So. They have to almost reestablish themselves again after having such a following. I mean, they're with uh, Paramount, which used to be Spike so since the Spike days. I mean, Spike picked up Bellator to fill the M- MMA void when the UFC moved over to Fox Sports. And uh, v- Bellator was always kind of there for Viacom to use. I mean, and before that, they're on MTV, too. And, you know, he goes back and goes back. So, but um, they're... They just need some time. I mean, I actually like what they're doing with Showtime, especially mixing it in with, uh, you know, Showtime now has boxing and MMA. So with all these sh- freak show fights that we're seeing, if they if they had, they definitely, they've already had um, uh, Logan Paul and Mayweather, you know, as a Showtime pay-per-view. So they can definitely feature those things. There's a market for it and they want to sell those there, especially with, you know, they have a whole roster full of, under their umbrella, the broadcasting rights are, are there for them to do stuff like that and not have it be so weird contractually. Scott Coker alluded to that with an interview he did with MMA Junkie. Uh, shout out to Nolan King for getting this this tidbit. But, you know, they talked about, like, would you cross-promote with any of the other, you know, because he's cross-promoted with Ryzen. He's done stuff with Glory. But it's always some 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 other uh, fight organization based outside of the U.S., because they have different broadcasting deals because of where they're at. Like Ryzen's on Japanese TV. So it's easier for Scott Coker to do something like he did with the, the whole champ champ thing with Kyoji Horiguchi, Darren Caldwell, that whole thing. Um, and the same thing with glory. So um, that was a, the only thing he said that would, that's uh, stopping him from doing that with anyone here because of where they're broadcast. So um, the question was about doing something with the PFL. And of course he was like, yeah, I do it. It's just, they're on, you know, Bottom line is they're on ESPN and we're on Showtime. So that's the only thing stopping me from otherwise my door is open. Scott Coker's always been cool like that because he I feel like he would put on a pride level event if he was given full control. You know, if Viacom said, dude, you got this, you know, because he's right now Espinosa's above him as far as their sports goes and Showtime. So I feel like he would just be like, yo, let's do the because he tried doing it with the dynamite events. I love the dynamite events. It wasn't everyone's cup of tea. It was kickboxing MMA. They had they already have the technology of a cool cage that lifts and changes from a kickboxing ring to a cage. So they could definitely do it. The, the ingredients are there. I've asked about it at a lot of press conferences. He's probably annoyed with me by that. 
and their PR people, but probably hate my questions. But um, anyway, UFC Vegas 37. Anthony Smith defeated Ryan Spahn. Uh, uh, first round submission. And I know he went at at, at Spawn. Full results are up at MMANews.com. Um, we do have a lot of uh, of the video clips, so those I cannot play for you. You know why. But, um, you know, there's a lot of highlights there from the, the all the UFC. If you're looking for UFC results and content, stuff like that, we definitely have plenty of that for you here. So just check out the website. Uh, all of this stuff is listed from multiple fights just above the quick results where you can see here on the website but um uh i had uh there's a couple underdogs that i picked when i was doing my uh this one right here gustavo lopez the first two fights i don't know why they were underdogs because these people are like really you know if you see enough of their fights you'll know um i was actually surprised that hannah goldie got that submission by armbar because i thought she was just gonna get a, a decision win over her because her first fight was a little rough when she fought the, not that first fight, the last fight at the UFC that she did was, it seemed like it was a little rough, rough going for her. So I was curious as to uh, how this was going to go because I like Emily Whitmere. I actually thought Emily Whitmere might've, might've been a, been the one be able to get a submission on her, but it worked the other way around. And Gustavo Lopez is just, a, I mean, um, unanimous draw. That's this, this isn't even right. This isn't even right. Anyway, I didn't do that. <laughs> but hopefully they'll see this video and correct it. But it was definitely uh, uh, a nice early UFC Vegas card that I, uh, again, I was out and about, so I missed it. I, I didn't I didn't get to, it didn't get on my radar until later because, again, Bellator 2, 266 was my focus. But this fight here was a, a barn burner. Ion Kutalaba and Devin Clark. Um, if you looked at that, you've probably seen by now the damage to uh, to uh, uh, his jaw. I mean, that's just insan insanity. Some of the stuff these guys do, man. I'm just. I had a really big, long conversation with Eric McGracken of Combat Sports Law for my podcast, um, just about you know brain trauma and injuries and stuff like this that happens in this sport. It's sometimes it's it's um, when I see like the breaks, like leg breaks, it's the stuff that happened to Connor Anderson Silva um chris weidman i always kind of just like take a step back and i'm like wow you know like the we're do it's entertaining it's sport for us but for them it's it's um i think imba kasagan kasagan way said uh who also fought last night um he said uh you know this is as far as from their point of view it's not it's not it's not sport it's not entertainment or whatever it's a way of life for these guys and that's why that's why it's so hard for them to walk away when we see stuff you know, um, the like Chris Weidman having struggling emotionally as he's dealing with his leg healing and, you know, McGregor's fight, trying to fight. Uh, uh, we got, we got that up here. Stuff about McGregor trying to fight a uh, machine gun Kelly, like who's, who had milk on his face. <laughs> I don't know, but, um, yeah, UFC Vegas 37 flow results. I was happy that, uh, uh, Lionheart, I always root for Lionheart Smith because uh, because of the way he, he always seemed to be this guy that nobody nobody roots for, and um, he actually that he made it a point in his uh, post fight interview to say like you know what like everyone's ready to always everyone's always ready to throw him under the bus and and right usually right when that time is is when he shines brightest. Um, definitely worthy of the name. No offense to Jillian DeCourcy who was also uh, uses Lionheart. Not a lion, not a lion heart, not a lot of lion hearts out there, but them two fighters definitely uh, worthy of the name. So, um, and every and moments like last night are the ones that make me just be like, wow, that's that's why you guys picked up that name. So, it'll be interesting to see where where he goes next. I forgot who he said. Who did he say he wanted to fight in his post fight uh, in cage interview? He called out. Uh, I forgot who he called out, but he was like, you know, if 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 that's not the fight, then sk just skip it or some something to that effect. Um, so it's going to be an interesting. I mean, that that was kind of like I feel like not too many people were into this UFC because maybe because of the timing and maybe because of how it wasn't on ESPN. It was just ESPN Plus. That's definitely the reason why it was on the secondary on my priority list of what to watch. 
But, um, you know, it's always the quiet before the storm. UFC 266 is this coming Saturday. Um, and I feel like if unless you're watching The Ultimate Fighter, it probably doesn't feel like it's it's a pay-per-view fight week for you. But uh, we'll see how it is. I mean, with International Fight Week, they have all this stuff planned. We'll see how they handle it with the broadcasting and stuff like that. But uh, and we'll be here to talk about it on the next Sunday submission. So that's my time. Um, again, make sure you check out the website for the full results and, all, and everything you're looking for. If you feel like there's something I didn't get to. Thanks again for watching. If you like this, do the thumbs up bell notification for future videos like this and the interviews that the Canadian God James Lynch puts up. And again, MMAnews.com will have you covered for your UFC 266 fight week and all the heavy UFC content. If you want to step a little bit outside of that, you can follow me on Twitter at Carbazel. I try to follow the entire sport, all promotions. Um, and that's it for me. Enjoy the rest of your foosball this Sunday. I'm tapping out. I'll see you next week.